renovated retirement with Charlie Jewett. Oh no, I think I'm about to have another episode. As you guys know, I'm kind of a weirdo and sometimes I include my mic check and I thought today I would just include my mic check. Enjoy. Testing, testing, one, two, three. This is Super Charlie. Charlie, Charlie, ch 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 Charlie. Hello team, this is Charlie Jewett coming at you with another episode. This is episode one. Oh, three, now that I've caught up and recorded the missed lost episode of 92. From under the ocean, I might add. Blah, 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 blah. There were whale noises. I don't know if anybody caught the whale noises, but that was awesome. It was not Dory. It was really a whale. Now, episode 103 is called Stop Walking Uphill and Start Swimming Upstream. Hmm, what does that mean? What does that mean? Now, walking uphill or riding a bike uphill, uh, even driving uphill... Going uphill takes more energy, and you have to keep fighting, and the odds are stacked against you, particularly on a skateboard or a bike or something with wheels. If you let go, you're going backwards, right? So what am I talking about here? Stop walking uphill. I want to teach you some little-known facts about the stock market or using that risk with a side of fees strategy. Again, I don't hate any strategy. It's not wrong. It's just that the stock market, mutual fund... Uh, you know, diversified portfolio, blah, blah, blah strategy is so ridiculously overused, oversold, and abused, and matched with the wrong people. People in retirement or nearing retirement should never have almost all of their money with an investment advisor, even if he's a fiduciary, in the market in a diversified portfolio. Now, let me just put a caveat on that. If you're rich, if you're loaded, meaning you look at your portfolio and you say, I could live off a one or 2% of this thing. So you've got $10 million, you need $200,000 a year to live. Maybe you're fine to you know do this, to take all this risk and get lower returns and have more fees than anybody else because it's not going to affect your lifestyle. But you understand and you know that my podcast is geared toward the gigantic group of people retiring at 10,000 people a day who have saved just enough money to retire when they want to. Not the people that are loaded and have the extra money. I can do incredible good for those people. It's just not the niche that the podcast is geared towards. I'm talking about people that need their assets for income, that have a nest egg that was for retirement planning, okay? Now, why shouldn't they they have all their money in the stock market or a diversified portfolio, blah, blah, blah? Here's the thing. I'm going to open up a calculator. You guys can do the same thing. Just open up a calculator and I'm going to prove to you that the odds are stacked against you in a way that your Joker Broker will probably never show you. Okay, let's do it. Let's put in, um, let's use a million. I don't care if you have a million dollars or not. It's a nice round number. Let's say you have a million dollars and it's in a diversified portfolio. It's spread around, which really is not true. They put, instead of, you know, people say don't put all your eggs in one basket. Your Joker Broker just give you different eggs. One basket called uh, securities for the stock market. And they give you some bonds, some stocks, different types of mutual funds. You have a duck egg, a quail egg, a platypus egg, and a chicken egg. When it falls, they all break. So it's really kind of silly. They leave out life insurance. They leave out annuities. They leave out real estate. They leave out life settlements. They leave out businesses. They leave out all kinds of stuff. Let's take a million dollars and say, because the market's been dropping a little bit, say it loses uh, 30%. So 1 million times 0.7, we have $700,000 left. Okay, so it falls. And typically it falls kind of fast. There's panic selling and people, if you look at just the history of the S&P 500, maybe go to finance.yahoo.com, look for the S&P 500, and then just look back, you know, at a five-year chart or if you can get it, look at the entire history and you'll see that the crashes happen quickly. You lose money fast. And then to get it back happens slowly over the next three, four, five years. But that's not even what I'm talking about. I'm just going to talk about percentages. You lose $700,000. I'm sorry, you lose $300,000 or 30% of your portfolio. You're down to $700,000. How much of an increase do you need now? What percentage of seven hundred is the $300,000 that you need? Let's just do some math here. 300000 divided by 700000 you now need almost a 43% return just to get back to where you already were. And if you do, and it takes only two or three years, 
you lost two or three years of compounding, which your joker broker will never quantify for you or draw to your attention. I will, because the most important factor in growing an account, in growing your money, the most important factor is time. And what the joker brokers conveniently leave out is that in their strategy, in their different egg, same basket strategy, risk with a side of fees is the answer to everything, and I'm a criminal, ha ha ha, I should go to jail, what they leave out is that their strategy, you lose time. When the market goes down and you lose money, you have to wait until it recovers before you're even back in the game. My strategies just keep you in the game all the time. Now, I'm an investment advisor. I carry a Series 65. I could give you the crappy stuff if you wanted it. I'm just not mean or evil or stupid. I'm not going to put money in the stock market or mutual funds or any type of diversified portfolio of barf, 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 unless for that more risk and for those extra fees, you're getting a much greater return. I've gone back. I've done the research. I don't care what anybody says. It doesn't matter if they're a stupid billionaire or if they're poor. And they're smart billionaires. It's just for some reason in the financial services industry, the only billionaires who are famous are stupid and they lie. I don't care what they say. They wouldn't last five minutes on a debate with me. I've gone back and done the research. And the stock market is not outperforming annuities and life insurance, even if you didn't pay any fees. If you had the straight S&P 500 growth from 2000 till now, you would have 38% less money. This is as of 2016. So we can add the 2017 numbers. That's fine. You'd have almost 40% less money than a current annuity with just a 50% participation rate, which by the way, there's one with 50% participation plus dividends they would spank the crap out of any money manager in the country, except for maybe Carl Icahn or somebody like that, which you don't have enough money to work with. But if your account goes down 30%, just listen, if it goes down 30% and you allow that to happen, you need to now grow it by 43% just to get back to where you were. And if you do, you still lost two, three, four, five, six years of compounding. You lose. So small losses, listen, small losses need larger gains to recover. You are running, driving, or skateboarding uphill, uphill. Everything is against you. Let's reverse that. Let's say things go very well for you, like from 2008 until 2017, things were going incredibly well in the market as the government created false growth through quantitative easing. They were buying stuff from themselves, which is fake, and... There was a little bit of the Trump run-up. Well, the first, there's the recovery from all the losses in 2008-9. And then uh, after the election, there was the Trump run-up, which didn't make a lot of sense, but it, it's happening. Whatever. The markets were going up, and, you know, yippee ki -yay. It's awesome if you're making money. Let's say your million dollars. You go, Charlie, I'm not going to listen to your stupid strategies. My joker broker was so smart. He's got pie charts all over the place, and he's, he dresses nicely and has four Teslas, and he has an Armani suit. And he's in my town, and I can drive there into his expensive office, which you're paying for, by the way. And he gives me cookies, and he says a bunch of crap I don't understand, but it makes me think he's smart. And then I give him all my money, and I go, go get it, big boy. I don't even know what you're charging me, but it just feels good to be your client, because I go to client parties and stuff. And you go, I'm in. You give him a million dollars. It goes up by 50%. hoo he ha hoo ha ha 50%. Holy smokes. You and your wife or you and your, your spouse or girlfriend or just you and yourself, you're high-fiving, going, Thank God we didn't listen to Charlie. We kept our money at risk. You're like, yes, 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 yes. We didn't use annuities. We didn't use a safe, stupid stuff. We are incredible. Because your, mar your, your market, your money, your million dollars went up 50% in one year. Yeah, baby. That's what the stock market can do. And you are thinking that you are slick. You went from a million to one and a half million dollars. I don't really care the time frame, but let's say you did it in a year. All right, so you're up 50%. What percentage loss would take every one of those dollars away from you, take you back to a million where you started? I'm ignoring fees, by the way. But what percentage would take all of that gain away from you 
to where not only is there no growth, but if it happened over a two-year period, you have lost two years of compounding, which is the most important part. Time is the most important factor in growing money, period. Well, let's just look. You had a million. You added a half of that. You added $500,000. We need to look at a few percentages here. $500,000. You can do this on your calculator on your phone. Divided by 1.5 million. What does it tell us, folks? 33%. 33.4% basically. So let me get this straight. If you lose money, you lose 30% of your account, you need almost 43% to get it back. And even if you do, you lost all the time it takes. But if you gain money, which is the only reason, the only reason people wouldn't want to use safer strategies is upside potential. They go, here's why I'm using the market. Because it can, it's possible, if the stars align, then it can go up really quickly. And I can make a lot of money. But if you do, you make 50% rate of return. Your million dollars turns into $1.5 million. What will take that away from you and leave you with the years of not compounding? Only 33.4%. Folks, huge gains can be taken away by smaller losses. Small losses need huge gains. To recover from them and even if you got that which you look at the history of the stock market you won't and you haven't you didn't and you certainly won't with the baby boomers retiring and taking money out of the stock market it's not going to change for the better when all the people that used to buy stocks bonds and mutual funds are now selling them Duh. who is in the world who in the world is teaching that small losses need huge gains to recover or bigger gains big gains can be taken away by smaller losses. You know what that is? That's called the odds are all stacked against you and you are walking up hill. It's a hard fought road and you will end up with less money. Now I can't really say that as a guarantee over the next 10, 20, 30 years. I can certainly say that, defend it in court, make any attorney judge or punk advisor looks stupid because two plus two is always four even if i dressed like a clown and talked like Pee Wee herman in the courtroom and showed up drunk if i wanted to i would still be right because truth isn't dependent on the messenger right <laughs> two plus two is always four the stock market and managed money does not and has not beat annuities and life insurance no matter how many stupid billionaires and captive agents and mutual son mutual son mutual fund peddlers no matter how much money they spend to say two plus two is five it they're still wrong and still doing something evil that hurts people they have to hurt people for a living if your advisor if you look at his business card or you go to his or her office and you recognize the name of the company that they work for from commercials and their big giant national companies or maybe they have they have their location in a strip mall and everywhere you go you see this company in every strip mall that person hurts people for a living their job is to get up every morning take the only things they're allowed to sell, which are crap, and tell everybody that they are the answer to everything. They only have a hammer, so you could only possibly have a nail, and the answer is always hammer the nail. People, they hurt people for a living. They are hurting you. You need to run as fast as humanly possible away from that person. Move your money out of their accounts, put it into a credit union account, a bank account or whatever, move the IRAs into IRAs, Roths into Roths, uh, brokerage accounts into cash or money markets at the bank, get in touch with me and then say, now what do I do? You don't need to know whether I'm good or where you're going to go. Dude, if, if a babysitter is molesting your children, you just fire them. Forget finding a new babysitter. What are you going to say? Well, you can keep molesting my kids for a little while because it's kind of hard to find good help these days. Let me start the interview process while you're molesting my kids. That's stupid. That's wrong. 
You're smarter than that. You're my listeners, for heaven's sakes. You're the smartest people on the planet. You fire the person who's ripping you off, regardless of whether you know where you're going next. Just fire them. Stop them from hurting you. If you're with a name brand mutual fund sales organization, just get in touch with me. I'll send you their revenue sharing disclosure where they say, their attorneys make them say, we are not going to do what is best for you. We're going to rip you off. We're going to jam you into mutual funds to the only the people that we're partnered with because they bring us donuts, they pay for our marketing, and they give us a kickback. We're not going to do what's best for you. We're going to hurt you because it's best for us. They have that disclosure on their website, and you don't know where to find it because they keep moving it and renaming it. People, I'm not upset because I'm stupid. I'm upset because this industry is a scam. They're hurting you. You should have more money, and you can have more money. You should have more income, and you can have more income. You should have more peace and clarity, and you can have that if you get away from the person who gets paid to take it from you so that they get paid more and can play golf all day. I'm not exaggerating. Come look at the data. Get in touch with me, charlie at jewettwealth.com, C-H-A-R-L-I-E at J-E-W-E-T-T wealth.com, charlie at jewettwealth.com. Get in touch. Find out why I'm so ticked off. The more I learned about this industry over the last 13 years, the more angry I became to the point where in May 2016, I exploded with the Renovating Retirement Podcast doing 77 days in a row or something like that. I don't remember how many days I did in a row until I completely burned out and had to not do daily. But I love you guys. I love retirees. I love math. I love truth. I love this industry. And these crooks and criminals have come in and destroyed this industry and they're hurting millions, millions and millions, maybe tens of millions or hundreds of millions. I don't know. Millions of people. You know how much money that is? You know why I say I could solve world hunger with the snap of my fingers? All we have to do is take a small percentage of the people that have lower income because their joker brokers are ripping them off, or a small percentage of the losses that people are experiencing when they don't need them, or a small percentage of the fees that all these people are paying that they don't need to pay because they're making lower returns than if they didn't have fees, or a small percentage of the home equity that's sitting there doing nothing and put it to work making arbitrage, or a small percentage of the people that have less death benefit than they than they could have at no extra cost, fix any one of those problems, I can create the $32 billion a year we need to solve world hunger in my sleep. Because this industry, on purpose, on purpose, why did Tony Robbins come out of the woodwork after 18 years and write a book that his publishers said, don't write it, we have too many financial books. Why did he put another financial book in the market, and it was over 600 pages. Why? Because he discovered the entire industry is a scam and they are ripping people off. You spend 30, 40 years saving this money and your joker broker puts you in a situation where the fees or the losses, so you're in an investment or a portfolio, that does not beat the cheaper alternative and the safer alternative. You're only in that because your guy is a criminal or stupid. I don't care if it's ignorance or immorality. Your person can be dumb or mean. I don't care. The results to you are the same. If somebody shoots me in the face on purpose or they shoot me in the face by mistake, my face is gone and I am dead. I don't care why they're doing it to you. You must stop them. You must stop taking advice and start to take charge. No one cares more about your money than you. You fire the joker broker who's putting you in risk with a side of fees when it has not beat the safer strategy since before 2000. Tony Robbins wrote an over 600 page book because what I'm saying is right. He didn't listen to me and wrote it and write it. He went out and found the same data that I did. Why do I have 50, 60 hours of me ranting? And why did he write over 600 pages? Because we discovered the same thing. <clears throat> you're being ripped off. And it's purposeful to line their pockets. And your joker broker has put you in a situation 
where one thing goes wrong, you work 30, 40 years to save this nest egg, one thing goes wrong, you will lose 10, 12, 15 years worth of your savings and you cannot get it back unless you want to go back to work in your 60s and 70s. Stop walking, skateboarding, running uphill, and start swimming upstream. Wait a minute. Charlie, that just doesn't sound right. You're like, hey, man, like the, the, the gravity's against you. You're trying to go up the hill on a skateboard or whatever. You have maybe like a drink in your hand, an energy drink, and you're on the phone at the same time. You're saying that like the gravity will, will go against you and it's hard, so don't do that. But then in the next sentence, almost without breathing, you say, swim upstream. It sounds the same. Isn't the stream, the current going to come against me and uh, be hard? I get it. I understand. I wrote the title on purpose. One truth I'm teaching, which is why run uphill or skateboard uphill, we can just go downhill. There's got to be benefits to going uphill. If going uphill, <clears throat> if going uphill, there's 20 bucks. Going downhill, there's 40 bucks. Anyone going uphill is stupid and gets less money. If safe strategies with no costs, no, no uh, fees, give you more return than risky strategies with fees, why is anybody, why is, why is anybody... Can I please go on TV? Can someone please grow a pair and challenge me to a debate? I'm on almost two years of challenging every financial advisor in the country, including billionaires, to debate me on television. And these freaking cowards will not do it because they know they're liars. They know they're ignorant. They know they're not as good. They know that they will be exposed as frauds. Can you let that sink in? Two years? Of challenging anybody. Can you imagine Michael Jordan in his prime? People challenging him on public television. On public television. On TV. You know, or any public area. To a game of one-on-one. -on -one. Can you imagine for two years him going, No, 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 I don't want to do that. No, I don't want to do that. No, I don't want to do that. And in my industry, the people that say no, who won't challenge me, they still have two, three, four hundred families. They're building their retirement plan. They don't have enough confidence to even test their skills against me, but they're going to go hurt 300 families to make a living? If you don't even think you're good enough to challenge somebody, why would you ever be in the industry? Why would anybody be with an advisor who's not willing to put up their skills against me? It proves you should fire them. Ask your own advisor. Would you debate Charlie Jewett? If they say no, you fire them easily it's the easiest decision you'll ever make if they're not even confident enough to challenge me on my show or on television they're screaming i don't think i'm very good i don't believe i can win he's gonna beat me and i'm gonna be exposed as a fraud but please please stay and leave your money with me so what's the difference between walking uphill and swimming upstream in what i'm teaching in what i'm teaching and if you've heard some of my other teachings you might know this I say you should be swimming upstream against the current. What does the current say? The current says pay off your mortgage, postpone taxes to a later date where somehow magically you'll, you'll be in a lower tax bracket and only use stocks, bonds, and mutual funds or only use securities and diversify your funds. That somehow is protection against losses. Those are the three pillars of financial deception. All three are lies. All three have been disproven over and over and over again. But the basic American plan is just that. Pay off your mortgage. Use IRAs and 401ks to postpone taxes to later and then stick all your money in the stock market and let some joker gamble for you and get paid even when he loses your 30%. And then you got to recover by 43 or 44 or whatever it was. I'm saying go against the grain. Swim upstream for a goal that's worth the extra effort. And along the way, everyone's going to be looking at you saying, you're going the wrong direction. What you're doing is stupid. You should be paying off your mortgage, not listening to math. <clears throat> you should be postponing taxes to a later date. Even though you think taxes will be higher later, and so do all of us, you should still postpone them to a later date because your ignorant CPA and advisors say so, and it's what we're all doing. Hey, don't use safe investments that make more money than the stock market. That's different, and we don't like different. Come with us and suffer. 
Put it all in the stock market and pay somebody to gamble for you who can't even prove that they've beat the stock market over the last 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years. Just blindly follow some joker with a nice office in your town. Stop listening to renovating retirement. Stop growing. Stop taking charge. Just take advice and suffer with the rest of us lemmings. I'm saying... You need to go against that. Swim upstream. Let all your friends tell you what you're doing is wrong. If you say 2 plus 2 is 4 and everybody in your life that you love says, no, it's not. It's 5. Just say, I don't want to talk about that anymore with you. Can we go get a beer? Whatever whatever you like about the relationship with that person, enjoy the other things you like. Maybe they're really fun to go to baseball games with. But if they say 2 plus 2 is 5, or you should pay off your mortgage, or you should postpone taxes, or you should not use annuities, or you should... Just don't let them into that part of your relationship. They're ignorant. They're brainwashed by, not surprisingly, by the billions and billions of dollars purposefully spent by the Joker Broker industry to brainwash you. It's on purpose, people. They're keeping the truth out of your head And putting false truths in your head so that you will keep behaving the way they want to. Don't walk upstream. Don't use strategies that are all built against you. And I'm not, I haven't even talked about or done my show on the uh, robot trading yet and the, you know, trades that happen in, you know, whatever they are. And I don't know if they're up to nanoseconds, but the way the entire stock market has changed. And even before you can make your trades or your advisor can make your trades. Other companies know you're going to do it, get in front of you and make a ton of profit and how much that changes, how much you can make. I mean, I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about basic percentages that your joker broker should have showed you in the beginning. You know, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, understand there is a lot of money to be made in the stock market. It's an investment. You shouldn't do it for you know, income. You shouldn't use it with money, with retirement savings. <laughs> Extra money that you have that you don't need. Yeah, let's go play. Just understand that 30% losses take you know, 43% gains to get them back, and then you lost the time. And 50% gains you can lose with just 33.4%. But even if you even if that happens, you get the money back, you've still lost the time. Just understand, you're running uphill. Everything is stacked against you. And please keep in mind, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, I know I get paid to do this, but, you know, we don't rewire houses for people unless they need the wires. We don't fix people's sinks unless their sink is clogged. We're never going to do work for somebody they don't need. I'm not going to give you investment advice or put you in investments unless you have extra money uh, that you can lose and you know how to, you know, and you want the risk. Just understand, this hasn't worked better than the safe things for the last 16 years, but it might. If you want to gamble, let's gamble together and I'll charge you 1% to do it. No joker broker is talking like that because they're criminals. They're absolute criminals trained by criminal organizations. And the stamp of the S&C... The SEC. the SEC stamps it and goes, you can do that. That's fine. No big deal. You guys can do that to as many families as you want to. That's what I'm trying to change in the industry. Why am I being such a pill? Why am I making such a loud noise? Why am I screaming my head off at all the industry organizations? Because what they're doing is criminal. Maybe they're not doing it on purpose, but what's being done with it is criminal. So stop using strategies that are completely stacked against you and start to go against the grain and use strategies because they're proven to be better and because the math is accurate and you will have an incredible life no matter whether you have long life, short life, rough life, sick life, and into the next life. Do you understand that? We're not trying to grow money for some stupid reason so you can point to an account and say this is awesome. We're trying to create income for long life, income for short life for a remaining spouse if you die, Emergency funds for rough life if something happens. Income, extra income to pay for long-term care if you have a sick life. And then when all is said and done, either income or a big chunk of money to take care of charities or loved ones. Long life, short life, rough life, sick life, and into the next life. There are no other goals for retirement planning. All right, stop walking uphill. Stop using strategies where everything's stacked against you and start swimming upstream. Start going against the grain. No matter how many people are telling you, there's listen, there's a lot of people on my team now too. We can give you the high fives if you need that emotional support. Start going upstream while everybody tells you what you're doing is wrong, but you are doing it because you can see upstream 
You can see the treasure. Downstream, there's 20 bucks. Upstream's a bar of gold. And you're going to go get it. I hope that helps. You people are the best. Renovate. Retirement. With Charlie Jude. That's all, folks. Would you like to come to the North Shore of Hawaii and spend some time with me? Hidden in only this one episode is a survey question that I want to ask my listeners. There's a mansion in Hawaii, five or six bedroom place, right near the ocean, famous surfing beaches. And I have a private chef who's a friend of mine who works with me. And we'd like to spend three to five days with a select group of people that want help rebuilding and re-architecting. They want to take charge of their own plan. Stop taking advice and take charge. And they would like to rebuild their mortgage plan, estate plan, retirement plan, insurance plan, and tax plan. If you would like to spend some time with me and my team on the North Shore of Hawaii, part play, part work, of course, let me know. Email me, charlie at jewettwealth.com, C-H-A-R-L-I-E at jewettwealth.com. That's spelled J-E-W-E-T-T, wealth.com. Maybe just title the email Hawaii. Just let me know if you could get yourselves there. You have to pay for your travel, but if you could get yourselves there and we take care of everything else and give you the greatest clarity and advice uh, available in the uh, retirement planning industry, would you like to come spend some time with me? Let me know. Charlie at jewettwealth.com. C-H-A-R-L-I-E at J-E-W-E-T-T wealth.com.